After playing all the games for the 20 second blender game making contest, I noticed something that I found quite interesting. It seemed like many games of the challenge were missing a goal, something for the player to do in the world that developers created. While I'm sure many people are aware of this problem, I want to quickly point out how some games could have been drastically improved by having the player follow an objective. Please note that this is my opinion and that all I'm talking about in this video are my own ideas. It should also be considered that these games were made in a very short time period of 7 days. Creating a game in that short amount of time is super hard and I want to congratulate everyone who managed to make a game for this contest. Before I take a look at each individual game, I want you to ask yourself, what makes your game fun? When creating a game, even in 7 days, you should always try to make your game fun to play. If you take inspiration from another game, try to figure out what makes this game fun and replicate just that. Have other people play your game and tell you what they liked or didn't like about it. After you know what makes your game fun, focus on building your entire game around this aspect. Try to make that part of your game as good as it can be and you will end up with a much more fun game. So let's start analyzing the games of the 20 second blender game making contest. I will be mainly focusing on the negative aspects of the games, but that doesn't mean those games are necessarily bad. There are many things these games did right, I just want to point out some ways to improve on what the developers created. So if any of the games developers are watching this, please don't take this criticism personally. Ecclesia this is the first game I played from the contest, and while I thought it looked very cool and had some good animations, I quickly came to realize that there was nothing to do in the game. You can run around, climb and even fight with your sword, but there's nothing to ever fight against. It is clearly shown that the developer tried to focus on creating something that looks good. By that, he ran out of time to create the actual game though. Apparently, after watching a video by the developer, it looked like you can attack the grass to get some coins. This is something I missed during the, my playthrough and something that the game never explained to me. In my opinion, even some simple enemies would have made the game a lot more fun. Another thing I noticed among many games is that some of the maps were just huge. But there was nothing to do other than running around in them. Usually the movement speed was quite slow, which made this even worse. So I found myself running around the tower for about one minute just to find out there was nothing to do on the other side. Undertow. This game surprised me by the amount of content it had. The atmosphere was great and it was actually a long game compared to the others. It also succeeded because it had a goal and an ending to it. Usually the goal was to progress to the next part of the game which involved some puzzle solving and collecting objects. I have to point out that this game was created by two people though, so this might explain the game's polish compared to others. There was one major issue I had with the game. And that was the health bar, as well as the need to eat and drink to keep myself alive. I don't understand why they added this survival aspect, as the game was geared more towards exploration anyways, so this felt more like an unnecessary addition which nobody would have missed. Instead of exploring around freely, I had to constantly focus on finding something to eat so I wouldn't starve to death. At one point of the game this turned out to be causing even more frustration. In a later level, you have to collect 10 coins to get a key from a vending machine. This sounds good so far, but the area is quite big and the last coin is always the hardest to find. So on my first playthrough, I just died because of starvation after I ate all the food lying on the ground. What's even worse is that after dying, there are no checkpoints, so I had to sit through all the puzzles and unskippable cutscenes again, just to get another chance to find the coins. I eventually succeeded and got to move on to the rest of the game. All 30 I don't want to offend the creator of this game nor make the game look bad. The following is just my view of it and I hope this critique will be helpful for the developer to improve on future projects. The game itself looked okay and definitely had a goal, but other than that I think it wasn't really fun. 
You spawn on a big snowy plain and your goal is to collect 30 snowflakes. That's it, nothing else to do. What makes this even worse is the slow movement speed of the player. If I didn't increase that by changing the game file, it would have probably taken me 10 minutes to collect all 30 snowflakes. I hoped for something to happen after I collected all snowflakes, but my expectations weren't met here as well. Nothing happened, so I just closed the game. Even just a cool visual or something as a reward for collecting all the snowflakes would have probably improved my view on the game. As a side note, I thought it was actually quite fun to play the game with a higher movement speed, as it felt like I was cruising around the area trying to collect the snowflakes as fast as possible. This brought some more skill into the game and made it a lot more fun. Every Man's Sky this game is a new take on procedural planet generation as seen in the game No Man's Sky. The system is quite impressive and there is actually a lot to explore. There are different plants, climates, atmospheres and several other aspects, but nothing of this actually affects the player in any way. There is no real focus on the survival aspect this game could have and there is no goal. You fly around, land on some planet, explore a little and then fly to the next one. Again, it is important to note that all these games have been created in 7 days and that the developers probably had many of these things in mind, but simply lacked the time to implement them. I can fully understand that. What I am trying to establish is that some games should have maybe shifted the focus more on game design and away from making the game look good. The Not So Brave Little Pig This game was one of the most polished in the competition. It featured a story and some well written dialogue. It was very entertaining just to listen to the voice actors alone. My only complaint apart from a game breaking bug that didn't allow me to finish the game was again the huge level. There are only 3 or 4 spots that you need the character to walk to, but every walk takes about 30 seconds. During that time the player doesn't do anything other than pressing the W key on their keyboard. Again, this is just a minor complaint and the rest of the game was really well thought out. I also felt like the developer spent some good effort on the level design to guide the player where to go. Game with no name Initially, this game felt really interesting to me. You are in a place which looks like a gallery and various quotes are written on the walls. I thought there would be more to find, but after exploring a bit, I found out that the quotes soon repeated themselves. This whole experience felt more like an artistic statement than the game, so maybe I was a bit biased during my playthrough. There's also the option to jump out of the level, which looked like a bug, but something really made me feel like this was intentional and that there would be more to come if I just jumped out of the level but nothing happened. I think this would have been a great opportunity to add to the game, as it would have been completely unexpected by the player. There's not really much else to say here, since the game doesn't have a goal or much gameplay. In caves you control a small submarine, and your mission is to bring radioactive waste back to your base. I really liked this idea, and the underwater world was pretty cool, with several plants and animals populating the level. The controls took some time to get used to, but other than that I didn't encounter any major problems. It took me a while to find the first chunk of radioactive waste, and after bringing it back to the base nothing really happened, so I assumed I have to collect more. I scavenged around for a while, but couldn't find any more waste, so I stopped playing. Maybe I could have found more, but the controls made it hard to navigate the level, which was quite big again, so I easily lost my orientation and swam around in circles. Some more landmarks, like the big underwater ruins which are in the game, could have probably helped to navigate the level easier. Horsey Adventure I don't feel like I can really critique this game, as it doesn't seem to take itself too serious anyways. There's hardly any gameplay, and the only thing you do is walk around and talk to people. This works for this game, because things like missing features and bugs can be explained as wanted by the developer. I quite like the short experience and simple graphic style. There could have been more to do, more small quests to follow, but other than that there's nothing much to add to it. A Walk in the Park a walk in the park was more of an interactive experience than a game. Again, no goal, just a walk through a surreal park which featured strange objects reacting to the background music. The visuals looked good, but there was nothing to do gameplay wise. I think for this kind of experience this is okay, but it didn't feel like there was much content here. There was no ending to the game, so I just had to end it myself when I thought I had explored everything, which didn't take too long by the way. Cave Miner this game featured one of the coolest game mechanics in the contest. You're a mining robot in a cave, scavenging for resources. The level is randomly generated and influenced by the player, as every wall can be mined away. I thought this was really interesting, and I haven't really seen something like that in a Blender game yet. 
With this cool mechanic, I was even more surprised that the game doesn't really take it anywhere. There's no reason why you mine resources, nothing to do with them, no goal. The robot has a health bar, but I couldn't find anything that would take down my health. I feel like there's a lot of potential in the mechanic of this game and that this would have been definitely fun if there was a certain goal to pursue. Terminus North This was the last game I played for the contest and it was my personal favorite. I don't want to talk too much about the game itself as I think you should just experience it yourself, but I want to show you why I liked it so much. It throws you into a surreal world with no indication of what to do other than a black spot on the horizon. Eventually, you figure out the basic game mechanic, which is used several times throughout the game, but each time something changes slightly, so the player never gets bored. It doesn't take long to get to the end, but I appreciate that the game actually has an end to it. The game did a good job at keeping the player's interest, with steadily increasing the pace until the end. My only complaint was the extremely loud music throughout the game. I was really lucky I turned down my speaker before the ending sequence, otherwise I would probably be deaf now. Conclusion I want to say that all of the games created for this Blender game making contest were great and that the developers probably learned a lot while creating them. Making a game in 7 days takes a lot of work and everyone who participated in this challenge can be really proud of themselves even if the game doesn't win in the end. I hope my critique will help you to understand where you can improve to make even more fun games in the future. It is at this point that I want to stress how important game design is in the game creation process to make a game fun to play. I highly recommend you go check out a YouTube channel called Extra Credits that focuses entirely on analyzing game design. There's a lot I've learned from their videos and I'm sure you will too. The link will be in the description along with the links to all the games of this contest. I'm looking forward to future Blender game making contests to see how you guys can improve. If you made it to this point of the video, I really want to thank you for watching and if you have different opinions or thoughts, feel free to share them in the comments. This took me quite a while to put together, so it would be great to know if I should continue making these kinds of videos. I hope to see you in the next one, have a nice day and keep making great games.